more. One more. Can't live. Yes, I win. I told you I could do more. Shh, guys, Yara's calling. Oh, please, you did one push-up. Good afternoon, little heroes. That is technically more than zero. Guys. Sorry, Liara. Go ahead. Thank you. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate each of you for catching two of the six of the Icky Six in just a week. Thanks to you guys, Loafer and Tantrum are back in jail where they belong. Now, I know there's no I in team, but there is an I in Little Hero of the Month. That's right, the mayor has selected a Little Hero of the Month and requests your presence as soon as possible at City Hall. All right, all right, we're on our way. Wonderful. See you all in a bit. All right, you heard the lady. Let's go get to the City Hall before I forget my acceptance speech. Acceptance speech? Uh, yeah, just in case. You gotta be prepared. Who do you think it is? I don't know, it could be anyone. Matt! Oh, coming! Welcome, Rescue Squad. Unfortunately, Mayor Mister is currently attending a mayoral retreat and will not be able to present this award in person, but he sends his warmest regards. He asks that I present this award in his place and read the following letter. January's Little Hero of the Month was chosen on behalf of their courage, bravery, and grit. This little hero showed these strengths in the past week by saving my brother, Chef Mister, from the evil snares of the Icky Six villain, Loafer. Didn't you help catch Loafer? Yeah. This yes. little hero is not just a hero, but an exemplary firefighter. I know. Pretty cool. January's little hero of the month is none other than... Lieutenant Kate. Oh, thank you so much. This is a great honor. I'd like to get thank all of you for helping me Lieutenant Matt. I think you misheard. The little hero of the month is Kate. Me? Way to go, Kate! <laughs> Woo! Yay! What should we do to celebrate? On behalf of the mayor and the city of Littleville, we will be throwing a pizza party this Friday at 3 here at City Hall. You better start sending out your invitations. Pizza! 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 Are you all right, Mac? You seem upset. I'm fine. Someone gets balloons. Jack, um, you get balloons. I'll get the candy. Yep. Mac, please be happy. Kate, um, um, you also need to fix the table box. And um, Sam, don't forget the balloons, please. Sam, you wanna drive, Mac? No thanks. I think I'm going to walk home. Okay then. Last day. Who are you? No one. Just another somebody who nobody knows because everyone is having more fun than little old me. Tell me about it. Can I help you? I saw your friends left you. They're planning a party. It should have been me. She doesn't even like pizza that much. Everybody gets to have more fun than us. It stinks. No, I think that's just you. But it's fine. <coughs> I'm used to it. You should do your own party. You know, that would really show them. What kind of party? A pity party this Friday at 3. But that's the perfect time to feel sorry for ourselves. Mail. You've been cordially invited to a pizza party in honor of Lieutenant Kate, Little Hero of the Month. RSVP with your favorite topping. Ooh, I'm putting pineapple. <laughs> you and your weird fruit pizza. You are semi cordially invited to a pity party in honor of. Wait, a pity party? Is it a pizza pity party? Wait a second, this is from Mac. He's planning his own party at the exact same time as Kate's. <gasps> this 
smells like oregano. Mac, what is this? Oh good, you got your invites. You know Kate's party is on Friday, at the same time. You were there when Liara told us. Well now, why would I purposely plan the party at the same time and make my friends have to choose between me and the girl who doesn't deserve to be a little hero of the month? You're trying to ruin her party, I know it. If you were mad, why didn't you just say so? I'm not mad. We're sad, it's a pity party. Hey Mac, there's no space on your invitation for pizza topping suggestions. Can I just- Not now, Jack. Fine, don't come to my party. I guess I'm not worth celebrating. <coughs> I got pizza! Hey Sam, could you help me out with these? Help is on the way. Hey, have you talked to Mac today? Nope. Is he still hosting that pity party? I don't know, just don't mention it to Kate. I don't want her feelings to get hurt. Don't mention what to me. Uh, that I accidentally took a bite out of your pizza slice. Sorry. It's okay, I'll just get another slice. Let's just go inside. Really, Mac? You can't be happy for Kate for like one hour? Well, no one is ever happy for me. Well, now nobody's happy, period. Uh, that's the point. Kate, wait up. Kate, wait up. Kate! Kate, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's gone into Mac. Yeah, Mac is being totally whack. It's okay, guys. I'm just more surprised than anything. This just doesn't seem like something Mac would do. <gasps> because he didn't. Who do we know that likes to make people hurt their friends? The, the Icky, Icky Six! six. Uh, hold on a minute. I don't think this is something that the Icky Six would do. I mean, they're criminals. Having some lame party isn't a crime. No, we've seen their trickery before. I'm sure about this one. Mac, I know you're upset, but can you just please talk to us about it? I should have been Little Hero of the Month. I helped save Mary Meister's brother too. Mac, I know you're bummed you didn't get the award, but we all deserve a time to shine every now and then. Kate, what are you doing? Here, I want you to have this. I don't want your feelings to be hurt anymore. What are you waiting for? You got what you wanted, take it! No, Kate, you should have this medal. You earned it. I should be proud of you. I am proud of you, Kate. Oh, come on! You! Hey Mac, you got any leftover food from your pity party? I have a TV dinner for one. That is truly pitiful. We got a 1080 headed toward Jolly Street. The Steeler's on the run. I repeat, the Steeler is on the run. <laughs> Dispatch, can you repeat? I repeat, Earth 2-1.
to Jack. Do you copy? Over. Copy. I'm here. Finally. I was about to call the police. Sorry, I must have slept through my alarm. Well, rise and shine, Sleeping Beauty. We got a house call at 7502 Vicious Circle. What's the issue? Little girl named Ruby Roo says she heard a noise coming from her closet. Wants us to come check it out. Think you can be here in five minutes? You got it. On my way. Goodness, you scared me. Scared you? You're the one who jumped in front of my moving car. Maybe you should be more careful next time. What if you crashed? I'm not going to crash. Are you I... sure about that? I don't think you have the best track record. <laughs> Driving is too dangerous. Think of all the things that could go wrong. I guess I could just take my bike. Are you crazy? That's just as dangerous. You'll fall off and break your arm. Then how else am I supposed to go meet up with Sam? He was right there! He? The Rabbit Monster. Okay, Ruby, let's start from the beginning. When did you first hear the noise? Well, it was late last night. Technically this morning, I guess. I woke up to a loud thump coming from my closet. I was like, well, I'm already up, so I might as well go check it out. So I started walking towards my closet, and that's when it happened. You saw the monster? No. I stepped on a Lego. All seven years of my life flashed before my eyes. I've heard tales of stepping on Legos, but the reality of it was more than I could bear. If I hadn't been wearing slippers, I might have not been here to tell you this story. Okay, Ruby. Let's get back to the monster thing. Right, sorry. So anyways, I walked up to my closet, and when I opened the door, I saw him. The rabid monster! What did he look like? He was maybe like two to six feet tall, 80 to 200 pounds, between the lengths of 50 and 40, between the ages of eight and 40, and curly brown hair. Actually, it was straight, I think. You know what? My partner usually does the sketches. Let me go see where he is. Earth to Jack, where are you? Reef, what happened to you? Did you run here? I just figured I could. My steps. Do you have any water? I'm sure there's some inside. I found some. So, what's the status on Ruby? Uh, right, she thinks she saw a rabid monster in her closet. Rabid monster? monster? Yeah, like a monster with rabies, I guess. I think I'm gonna pass it. It's silly, I know. But I told you you do a composite sketch just to be thorough. She's waiting inside for us. You can't go in there. It's too dangerous. What if the monster gave you rabies? You coming? Uh, yeah. We'll go check it out. Come on, Jack. Jack, come on. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think I'll stay down here and get a sketch of the monster with Ruby. Jack, we both know there's no such thing as monsters. Now I really need you to come with me so we can both show Ruby that there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a trap. It's a trap. But what if there really is a monster with rabies? He's 
joking. I'm going to go check right now. So can you tell me what the monster looked like? Well, he was about 40 to 10 feet tall, 60 to 300 pounds, either 12 or 50 years old. Can you tell me what he was wearing? I think he was wearing a yellow shirt. This is too scary. Make her stop. Oh, and big front teeth. What if he eats you? You gotta get out of here, man. And words all over his face. Probably from the ra rabies. And big rabbit ears. Rabbit ears? Yeah, like bunny rabbit. <laughs> Wait a minute. You! I don't see anything. It's that guy who's been scaring me all day. Scaring you? Jack, why didn't you say something? I thought if I told you, you'd think I wasn't brave enough for the job. I keep having this really bad fear I'm gonna crash the cruiser. The more I worry about it, the more I start to worry about everything else. Jack, having fears doesn't keep you from being brave. Everyone has fears. It's what you do with those fears that makes you brave. Just saying your fear takes courage, and you just did that. Future Ruby, it was brave of you to call us when you got scared. I guess so. I just wish I wasn't such a worry wart sometimes. That's it. That's his name. Worry wart. Donuts made with real tears of joy. They taste like sugar magical silver clouds. I made them for the mayor's special bowling bunch this morning, but I'll let you try one if that hot cocoa is for me. It's got your name on it. <laughs> okay, but first, try one and be honest. This is so. Um, is it not good, or is your mouth full, or are you just speechless? Sorry, I'll stop talking. Awesome. Nay! Well, I would tell you year round if they weren't so hard to make. Did you know that unicorn teas are only in season through mid spring and sometimes June? Anyway, gotta take these to City Hall before they get cold. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Brandon. Can you please watch my counter while I go run these errands? Anyway, I really have to go like right now. Bye! Looks like she forgot something. I better go take these out there before she leaves. Whoa, hold on a second. These unicorn donuts are as rare as the mythical unicorn themselves. And yet, here they are, practically begging you to eat them. But I didn't pay for them. They aren't mine. And I already had one, so I'm good. Are you, Brandon? So you're telling me if you found a treasure chest full of golden doubloons, you would take one coin and say, I'm good. Well, no, but... Because listen, buddy, this is your treasure chest. It's now or never. These puppies aren't going to be around forever. And you heard the lady, they're limited edition. The donuts are good. Who's up for seconds? Okay, go! Six miles per hour. What? That can't be right. I swear I ran 10 miles per hour yesterday. Let me see. My turn! Uh, 
On your mark, get set, go! Holy smokes, 80 miles per hour? Are you an actual cheetah? I'm fast, but I'm not that fast. Looks like someone's in a hurry. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, little heroes. I was supposed to deliver my unicorn donuts to City Hall for Mayor's Bowling Brunch at 9 a.m., but I forgot them at my shop. So that's why I need to get there right away. Okay, slow down. Man, you talk almost as fast as you drive. Is there a speed limit for speaking? No, but there is one for driving, and you were going about, mm, 40 over it? Mm. Jack, can you hand me my ticket book, please? <coughs> Do you not have your own doodle pad? Well, since all my speeding tickets have turned into comic strips, <laughs> I'm going to let you off with a warning. Oh, thank you so much, little heroes. It means so much to me this morning. I promise I'll be more you to careful next time. Oh, silly me. Sorry about that. See you later. Lower, please. We've got to go get some of those unicorn donuts. They're life changing. Hang on, Picasso. We're gonna stop by City Hall to get a new ticket book. Oh, right. Man, these donuts are rich. The richer the better, amigo. Um, I had enough for one day. Enough? There's no such thing. It's never enough. You need more. But Harry's here. What am I gonna do about the donuts? Finish them. Leave no traces. Are you eating the cardboard? Leave no traces. I'm back. Here's your new ticket book. Is there anything else I can get for you, little heroes? Coffee? Candy? That's okay. We we're just about to stop by Red Harriet's to see if she had any extra unicorn donuts. What a coincidence! I was just waiting on a box of unicorn donuts myself. I ordered them for Mayor Mister's bowling team brunch this morning, but they never arrived. Speaking of Red Harriet, little heroes, this is. Slow down, Red. What happened? What's wrong? Sounds like someone ate the unicorn donuts. Hmm, I wonder who could have done that. What do you mean? I'm just saying, if anyone loves sugar and unicorns, it's Red Harriet. You think she ate all the donuts? Just a theory. Okay, Red, I got it. Did you see anyone in the store? I thought I saw one through the window, but they left, so I don't know. What did he look like? Well, I mean, they were colorful and they have round circles in the middle. Sorry, the person you saw, not the donuts. Oh. Kind of looked like Brandon, but he left. Brandon of Brandon's Hot Cocoa Stand? That's the one. <laughs> Red, be honest with us. Did you eat those donuts? Of course not. I took 48 hours to make those. Look, we understand if you did. I mean, they're pretty amazing donuts. Listen, I didn't eat them. I don't know who did, but it wasn't me. I can explain. Brandon, how could you? How could I? How could you make such delicious donuts and expect me only to eat one? I'm sorry, Red. I feel sick about it. Literally. I guess I just got greedy. Bensler! Oh! <laughs> hey, officers! <laughs> How did these get here? I'm 
I'm so excited to finally try them. Here you go. Thanks for making these for us. You're welcome. It only took half as long since Brandon helped me. You know, I made out of a special ingredient of my own. Hot cocoa? Yeah, hot cocoa. <laughs> Hot chocolate, the perfect winter treat. Complimentary marshmallows. So morning. It'll pick up after lunch. Chocolate, the perfect winter treat. Complimentary marshmallows. No thanks, I already got some. Oh, um, okay, uh, stay, um, stay warm. cup of you taking this stand down immediately. Oh, I'm so sorry. We only have hot cocoa at the moment. If you have a complaint, please fill out one of the comment cards. Listen, I've been selling hot chocolate on this block for the past two winters. You can't just come and start selling the same stuff right down the road. Same stuff? <laughs> what I'm selling is hot cocoa, an artisanal winter beverage. What you're selling is hot chocolate for kids on the Polar Express. <laughs> and with marshmallows, which we all know is the mayonnaise of drink topping. Take it down. Make me. <laughs> Have a blessed Monday. Supposed to talk to strangers. I just want a cup of chocolate. Oh. Went to the other guy down the street and he was just like. <coughs> I know. He stole my idea. But there's nothing I can do about it. No! He stole your idea and your customers. You need to make him pay. Wait. But he didn't buy anything from me, so. No, you need to make him pay. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so I get them in chokeholds and read the Michaela rights? No. No, no, Miranda, Miranda and no toko. Right, right, sorry. What if they're bigger than me? I mean, mentally or physically? <sighs> Let's take a snack break. We've been at this for five hours. Good call, Sam. All this police training makes me hungry. And kind of sweaty. Speaking of sweat, I heard there's a new hot cocoa stand off Elm Street. Speaking of sweat? Well, cause hot cocoa, hot things make you sweaty. Look, it made sense in my head. You wanna drive the police cruiser this time? Absolutely. Sorry, sweaty palms. All right, sorry folks, gotta fill her up. 
Friends Hot Coco, thank you for your patience. Have your window. I don't think I should be doing this. He deserves it. Besides, just think of all the business he stole. And no one's too good for the Polar Express. <laughs> Dad, you do it! Dad, come on! Goodbye, chocolate chips and bins! Spill it all over the ground! All the way over into Indiana! That's where it belongs! <laughs> It's just a call on the dispatch radio. You want to answer it? I guess. Okay, remember what we practiced. This is Little Heroes. May I take your order? Little Heroes, it's Brandon. Brandon's hot cocoa stand. Oh, hey, Brandon. We're actually on our way to your cocoa stand. Yeah, well, you might want to hurry. It's an emergency. What happened? you guys are looking for. I know who it was. How can you be so sure? I have the evidence right here. Now, you go and have a hot chocolate of a day. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, ma'am. Are you Jesse? That's me. Now, would you guys like some hot chocolate? I can throw in some extra marshmallows. No, thank you. Um, can you confirm your whereabouts at... <laughs> Oops, sorry. I think I grabbed the wrong notepad. Where were you at noon today? I've been here all day. Liar! You trashed my stand. I know it was you. Yeah, right? He can't prove it. He can't prove it. Now, move along so I can serve my incredibly long line of loyal customers. Jack, the evidence, please. Right. Oops. She sabotaged you. The only thing now is revenge. Well, we had proof, and you're the only one who could have done it. It was not. Was too. Ma'am, may I see your license and registration? <coughs> Jack, no, we talked about this. He never listens to you. You spent all this time teaching him how to be a cop, and he still doesn't know anything. It's like you're not listening to anything I've been teaching you. You're gonna let her treat you like that? She's not the boss of you. Well, technically she is my superior and... Wait, who are you? Wait a second. You're one of the Icky Six. You're a tantrum. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Get him! Buddy, but this is my partner seat. <laughs> this isn't fair! What are you doing? Get back here and I'll come in right now. I'm always the victim. Well then, I think some apologies need to be made. Jesse, you want to start? Yes. Brandon, I'm really sorry. I thought you were stealing all my customers on purpose and it made me mad. But ruining your hot cocoa stand was not a good way for me to handle my anger. I forgive you, Jesse, and I'm sorry I said your hot chocolate wasn't classy. Truth is, I'm a softie for marshmallows. Marshmallows are disgusting! 
And Jack, I'm sorry I get frustrated with you sometimes. I know you're doing your best and I'll try to be more patient. It's okay, Sam. And I'm sorry for melting your bike seat in the microwave. What? You're all late! I'm always angry and look how well I'm doing! We should probably take him in before he breaks the cruiser. Okay, thank you, little heroes. Sorry you didn't get your hot cocoa. Wait, I have an idea. Can you guys be here later this afternoon? Sure. You done good today, Officer Jack. Not so bad yourself, Captain. Sorry, sweaty palms. Click to subscribe or watch more videos.